but years later at my father's funeral, the um, cantor who presided over my father's funeral, years later, which was, I just said years later like three times, but I guess it was 13, 23, 17 years later, my father died very young, the cantor told my mother uh, that I had never gone to Hebrew school, that he used to see me come into the school, sit in class for a few minutes, leave early, climb out a window, and run across the street to this church where my Sandlot football team used to practice, and I used to go across the street to football practice. And my mother never knew that, and the cantor told my mother that story at my father's funeral, and they had a big laugh, and it was pretty funny. But So, I want to get to my mother's story, and this is the story that I want to share with you. So, for my whole life, and I'm owning this, I was kind of an asshole. Like, I thought my mother was an idiot because my mom, and just stay with me for a minute, my mother was the happiest human. Like, the most optimistic, nothing bothered her. I never saw my mother depressed ever once in my life, ever, never, not one time. I mean, I saw her angry sometimes, but basically my mother was a very happy, positive, optimistic person. And I used to think, who the hell is happy all the time? Like, I thought she was the most shallow, kind of vapid. I thought there was nothing going on there. You know, like, who's happy like that? Like, I just didn't think that she was a deep person. You know what I mean? So anyway, why did I share the whole bar mitzvah story with you? Because at my bar mitzvah, which is a really big deal for my parents, and for the parents of a ch any child being bar mitzvahed, my mother's best friend did not show up to the bar mitzvah. Um, and this really upset my mother. So much so that they stopped speaking. My mother stopped speaking to her for the next like 35, 40 years. Um, and for that entire time, I absolutely abused my mother. I was like, seriously? You're not speaking to your best friend because she didn't come to my bar mitzvah, you know? And many people abused my mother about this for years and years. I'm talking about, let me think, 13, 23, 33, 43, 50, 50, like for 40 years, I abused my mother about this. And a lot of people did too, and I, I was pretty rude about it too. I'm like, what are you, like, what are you mad because she didn't send me a gift? Like, are you that like materialistic or you're mad that she didn't come? Like, I didn't even want the bar mitzvah. Like, what's the big deal? Like, like you losing your best friend because she didn't come to a stupid event that I didn't even want. That is, was like so unimportant. And my mother never said a word, she just took it. And you know, I would, I would get pretty hard too. I'd be like, what are you, like, are you stupid? Are you like, are you that shallow? Like, are you that disloyal? Like you lose a friend because she doesn't come to your son's bar mitzvah who didn't even want a bar mitzvah. It's like ridiculous. So anyway, fast forward many years. My mother's best friend got sick and now she's dying of cancer. Ironically, my mother is in my house sick. Also, perhaps, well, she didn't know it at the time. She was on a healing path at that point but she was she was close to dying and so I was saying to my mother during that time I'm like yo mom Elaine is dying like you should go see her like don't you feel bad like you haven't spoken to her for all these years like why don't you go out there and see her she was your best friend for all these years she's dying like go make peace with her because Elaine had been trying to reach out for my mother for many many years and my mother just wouldn't respond and so anyway, to make this story a little bit shorter, I finally convinced my mother. I took her to Westchester, you know, to Yonkers where Elaine was. They saw each other. It was a beautiful reunion. They made peace. It was really, really nice, you know. So I'm driving back with my mom. And we're both very quiet in the car because it was, it was really a very profound um, moment. You know, it was really, really kind of deep, this coming together of these two people who had been so close for so many years and then disconnected for 40 years. Um, it was it was remarkable, actually. And so I broke the silence and I said to my mother, don't you feel stupid? Like, don't you feel like an asshole? Like, you did not speak to this woman for almost 40 years. 
based on something so ridiculous, like, I, you know, like, I didn't even want this thing. My mother finally goes, stop. I'm like, what? She goes, look. <laughs> My mother always started an important phrase with look. She said, it wasn't that she didn't show up. And it wasn't that she didn't give you a gift. And I said, all right, well, it wasn't, if it wasn't those two things, like, what was it? She goes, Elaine always made a big deal out of all of the kids' events, you know, like sweet 16s, bar mitzvahs, bats mitzvahs, graduations, whatever. She always made a really big deal about everything for all the other kids in the family, cousins, everybody. But she didn't, she didn't even call me. She didn't send a letter. She didn't do anything. I was like, what's the big deal? Like I said, she made a big deal for all the other children. And there was no way anybody in this family was going to treat you any differently just because you were adopted. And I was stunned. I was like, oh my God. That makes sense to me. Like, I, you know, obviously I felt horrible when I heard this. And I said to my mother, oh my God, like, I, I've been abusing you for all these years. Everybody has been. You've taken so much shit from everybody. Like, why don't you say something? She goes, why should I? I didn't need anybody's approval. <laughs> and I was like, wow, you know, so this woman who my whole life, who I thought was like the dumbest kind of shallowest kind of a stupid woman who I loved I mean I loved her dearly but I just didn't really respect her as much as I could have because I just felt like there was not any kind of real depth to her soul this woman who I thought was like the dumbest woman in the world was in fact the smartest deepest most meaningful person the most profound like she didn't need anybody's approval we all need everybody's approval. I mean, so, yeah. That's that story. Stories in 4K number three. My amazing mother, Phyllis Wilk, who continued to surprise me right up until the end of her life and teach me that I didn't, you know, just when you think you know, you don't know. Like, you know, I never thought that my mother or my father, and that, in fact, and I'll get to that in future stories, really taught me anything. But they, you know, as I got older, I realized they taught me so much. And it was usually by example, which I think is the best way. So anyway, thanks so much for watching. Um, for the tech stuff, I'm using my Sony a6400 again, because it's the only camera I own. I'm using the Samyang 12 millimeter F2 lens, which is a wide angle lens. So I probably look a lot different. It's a manual lens, so I'm manually focusing. I'm shooting an S-Log again so I can get some of the background. It's a really bright day. I was standing at the uh, train station. I was, I, was, I was originally gonna shoot this right by the train, but I couldn't find a, a good spot. And there were a lot of people eating at these restaurants outside. It was really noisy. And so I walked around the corner and there's, there's this beautiful little park down here. The train station in Poughkeepsie is really close to the, this park, so. Um, and I love train stations, so anyway, I'm close to the train station. So thanks so much for watching, and I will see you on the next one. Two for this week, two every week, and I really appreciate the support I've been getting for these stories. It means a lot to me, and I, I hope you're enjoying them. So I'll see you next time. Peace.